Welcome back in, my beautiful builders! Today is gonna be a BZ day! <laughs> get, get it? Because we're, we're working with bees! No, but for real, today begins our epic journey into the world of bees. And bees in modded Minecraft are incredibly powerful. It'll allow us to automate a bunch of resources, including diamonds, which I really, really need. As you remember from the last episode, we still are missing a mega torch and things... Things are dangerous around here. So today we're gonna start off with a bit of summoning in order to get our first bees. And once we do so, we should be able to look them in the eyes and we'll get a bee cage, I believe. Let's see if this actually works out how I think it's going to. So we should have two bees spawn in. Yes, nice. <laughs> and these guys should be completely trapped down here with us because, uh, well, there's no escape other than the elevator, which I don't think those guys can use. So, if we go ahead and claim the quest, we should get a sturdy bee cage, and we can use this to actually trap one of these guys. Nice! Now this first bee, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna have to be a little bit cruel to, because I need honey, so... Into the smelter you go, little buddy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for this, I... Oh, I apologize, I really do. <laughs> But we should be, yeah, we're getting honey. We're getting honey, oh, the poor guy. The poor guy, he didn't stand a chance. <laughs> he didn't stand a chance against the mighty smelter. Well, anyway, now it should just be a matter of adding a warped plank here and then dumping some honey over top of it and we should end up with a beehive. I hate that I had to be so mean to that guy just for this. <laughs> oh well, but we got ourselves a bee housing capsule, not that we're, not that we're really going to use that today. Okay, don't worry buddy, you, you are actually safe. <laughs> As for your brother, don't ask. So at this point, I need a place to work in order to store all of these bees. So, building montage, commence. <laughs> I think I may have found a bit of a visual bug. <laughs> oh, that's funny. However, not as funny as this one. <laughs> uh, this one's all messed up. However, if we look from the other side... <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this, but I like it. Also, working on blood magic in the last episode has become incredibly useful. I also went ahead and added some silky cloth to my pickaxe in order to get the silk touch enchantment on it. And I'm using that in order to collect up a buttload of warped nylium because this stuff is going to go great as a flooring. But anyway, back to bees. This is our new bee production area. And I have to say, I think it came out looking pretty good. I used some blood shroom stems as a sort of honey looking block. I think it's kind of an intense honey, but that's okay. It definitely works for the nether. And then to complement that, I went with some different types of chipped warped blocks. And I absolutely love it, as well as the glass oak door from chipped. And I also, I, re I replaced the glass panes. <laughs> I did. I replaced them because the other stuff was kind of getting on my nerves. So we just went with vanilla glass panes. But I'm actually using a bit of a pod structure here in order to breed up my bees. And I got this idea from another YouTuber who's also playing through Inferno threefold. And basically his idea was make these larger rooms that you can just breed your bees in. And then once you have your specialized bees, take them out of these large rooms and move them into smaller pod rooms like this, where we can just set one beehive of one type of bee, set their blocks around that they need, and then they can just be self-sufficient in here and out of the main storage area. So this is where we can breed up our bees and then we can store them in their individual pods later on. I absolutely love that idea. Also, be sure to check out Threefold. Great idea and great YouTuber. Go check him out. 
But anyway, I think to get started here, we just have to start the vanilla way. <laughs> this dude took some damage. I'm sorry, little buddy. Uh, but I think we just start with a couple of bees, and they're going to go into the beehive and get us our first honeycomb. And then from there, we can make some additional beehives and start breeding these guys up. But I want to get several of the vanilla bees in here to start just basic honeycomb production. Oh yeah, and flowers. They definitely need flowers. And it looks like we are ready for our very first honeycombs. Nice. So I need to make sure that I keep up normal honeycomb production because we're going to be needing this throughout the entire process in order to make advanced beehives, but also to make just our normal beehive. So that's going to take three just for a normal beehive. And then to upgrade it to the advanced, we're going to need honeycombs, beehives, planks, campfire, and some shears. So these things are pretty expensive, but they come with some huge benefits. And at the start, the advanced beehive is going to seem very expensive, but this thing is totally worth it. First off, you don't need shears anymore. The shears are automatically built in because this has basically turned into an automation block. We also don't need campfires underneath anymore in order to keep our bees from getting angry because this thing is an interface now. Instead of having to right click with shears and all of that, we can just pull directly from the inventory. So what's gonna happen is over here, you can see three slots. This is the three bees that can be in a hive, just like vanilla Minecraft. The bees come in here and then automatically the shears are going to happen and we're going to get honeycomb over here. If we want honey bottles, we just supply glass bottles right here and then it'll make honey bottles over here. It's super, super simple. Everything ends up in this inventory over here and we don't have to do anything special. However, we can do something special. We can put an expansion box on top of this guy as well. And this now turns this into a multi-block structure that gives us even more utility. So we can now have up to five bees in a single beehive. And also we can make upgrades such as something like a simulation upgrade, which makes the bees no longer leave their hive. And instead they simulate leaving their hive. So they can go to their flowers and go back and produce honeycombs without ever actually leaving. It's really, really cool. It's something that's a little bit more advanced, but something we're definitely going to get into. So let's go ahead and replace our basic beehive. Hey, you ain't supposed to be in here. But anyway, as I was saying, let's go ahead and replace our vanilla beehive with the advanced beehive. And I'll also go ahead and put the expansion box on top. However, I may change this one out for a oak expansion box in the future, just so that it matches a little bit better. And I think that 15 bees should be enough to keep up with our honeycomb needs. But across the hall from my honeycomb bees, I actually have another pod set up with a bunch more bees here. And I'm gonna start transforming these guys into some of the bees that we need in order to get resources, starting with the crystalline bee, then the silky bee, then the ghostly bee, then the digger bee, the Cree bee. <laughs> oh, that's a terrible joke. And then in order to get the clay bee, we're gonna have to once again do a bit of blood magic, just a little bit of sand and our water sigil that we made in the last episode. There we go, two clay balls. I actually don't need any more than that. And now, the clay bee. Actually, I lied. I forgot that I need to put clay down in order for these guys to pollinate, so I'm gonna need a couple of clay blocks. And honestly, that didn't take me long at all to completely run out of pods. <laughs> it's expansion time. Alrighty, so I have four more pods created. Now let's go ahead and continue getting our foundational bees ready. And one of the things I'm gonna need is some dried sage. So I have some sage hung from a drying rack. And while that's drying, let's go ahead and make one more bee real quick. And that bee is the blue banded bee. Now that my sage is dry, I can get the nomad bee. And the last bee that I currently need is the chocolate mining bee. However, this guy is not gonna be able to have a buddy because I only had one hot chocolate. So I'll have to get him a friend later on. I found it, I found it, I found it, I found it. Ladies and gentlemen, my magnum torch. <laughs> I found it. It was here in my builder. I actually had to repair my town hall a while back 
and for whatever reason, they broke the Magnum Torch out of there, and I thought it was just going forever, but apparently, they just put it in their inventory. <laughs> we have a Magnum Torch back. Beautiful. Oh. Oh, it's it's been literally a week. It's been literally a week without this thing. <laughs> And I probably actually need more of these, to be honest, but I'm just glad to have one back. But anyway, back over here at the bees, and I have added even more pods so that we have enough room that we can start doing some breeding. But first, I have a side quest. And this side quest is eventually going to circle back to bees. However, for right now, we need to focus on a new mod called Nature's Aura. So to get started, we first need to smelt down some honey. We also need to make some golden string. And then we simply cast the honey over top the golden string in order to get brilliant fibers. So now that I have my brilliant fibers, I can grow up a normal oak tree and then place the fibers into the leaves. This will turn into golden leaves over time. Also, according to the quest book, the brilliant fiber can turn the leaves that are next to them into golden leaves as well. So I think I may actually just wait for this entire thing to become golden leaves. In the meantime, I'm going to make some more bonsai pots because I'm going to need them. And I would say that these look perfectly golden to me. Let's go ahead and do that. 43. Nice. That should last us for a good while. Alrighty, so the two bonsai pots that I definitely needed to set up was the willow log as well as the rubber wood log. And with all of that, I should be able to start making the ritual of the forest. First off, some gold powder. Then I can go ahead and grab a luminous fungus from our quest reward. And then I should be able to make some wooden stands, which is just willow slabs, rubber wood planks, as well as that luminous fungus that we just got. Now, I think we can actually get more of this here fairly easily. If we should be able to get more of this with energized glowstone and some warped fungus in the smelter. But anyway, let's go ahead and craft up one of these real quick. And that should complete this quest as well. Oh, we need eight of these. Looks like I will have to make up some more of that luminous fungus. All right, seven more wooden stands. So the next thing I need is a bottle and cork. And I think I should just be able to right click this. Nope. Okay. Oh, wait. Hey, it worked that time. <laughs> Apparently, you can't look at a block and do it. You have to do it in the air. Perfect. Bottled ghosts. So in order to start crafting in nature's aura, I first need to create the ritual of the forest. So my first goal is going to be to use the ritual of the forest to make the natural altar, which is kind of the big brother to the ritual of the forest. And what we're going to need for this is stone, gold, gold leaf, and also a token of joy. This token of joy can be gotten from an apple, some iron, some golden leaves, any type of flower, a torch, and then bottled sunlight. Bottled sunlight is actually pretty easy. It's that bottled ghost that we made earlier surrounded by glowstone dust. So... Let me get some rituals set up. Okay, so this should be all of the items that we need to make the token of joy. Now, all I need to do is place a sapling in the middle and I think just bone meal it. And once it grows, <laughs> and it didn't grow, but once it grows, the ritual should begin. Aha, aha, it's working. It's working. We're getting glowy magic. <laughs> nice. Oh, it used up all of my gold dust, though. Oh, well, I don't care. I got myself some token of joys. That was a super, super cool ritual, by the way. And now time to do this again for the natural altar. <laughs> I love, I love the particles of this. It looks absolutely amazing. Check that out. <laughs> and there it is. Perfect. So originally I wasn't going to set up a room for this mod, but after taking a look at some of the rituals, we're going to need a fair amount of space, both for nature's aura as well as for Ars Nouveau in the future. So I think that it's probably going to be a good idea to just go ahead and make a really, really large room for all of our magic mods. Alrighty, so I now have this room partially set up. Let's get our rituals in here. 
And the last thing that I should need to set up the natural altar is the golden stone bricks, which is just some stone bricks and some brilliant fiber that we made at the beginning of starting nature's aura. And then we can just follow along with our little ghost layout here and finish up this altar. And nice. So at this point, you're probably wondering, okay, how does this all tie back in to bees? And it's actually pretty simple. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at the crystalline bee. So this bee is actually not super useful on its own. I mean, it does provide nether quartz, but we wanted to provide something a little bit better than that. So if we go ahead and check out the uses of this guy, we can combine it with a bunch of other bees in order to get things like the gold bee and get free gold or the copper bee and get free copper. But you'll notice that with the copper bee, we actually have another bee that we need to breed it with, the ashy mining bee. So I decided to take a look at this guy and he's used in copper, aluminum, iron, and tin. He's a pretty important bee if I do say so myself. So how do we get this guy? Well, the only way to get this guy is to feed a digger bee a botanist pickaxe and a botanist pickaxe is why we went into nature's aura because we need the ancient wood rods as well as infused iron ingots now according to the nature's aura book it sounds like the natural altar just kind of works on its own and we don't actually have to activate this thing or anything so i think we just add our block of pig iron there and wait around and we should come back to some infused iron <laughs> I hope this doesn't take too long. Oh! Oh, I actually think I messed up. <laughs> I think I actually need to make the Crimson Altar specifically because this pack takes place in the Nether, so the Natural Altar isn't going to work. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's disappointing. Okay, let's pick this up and let's remake this into the Crimson Altar. All right, now let's give this a try. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say that definitely looks like it's working at least a little bit better. <laughs> All right, now this should turn into infused iron here in just a minute. And there we go, a full block of infused iron, which we can then break down into infused iron ingots in order to get our quest. Nice, and that unlocks quite a bit inside of Nature's Aura. However, this isn't exactly what I was doing Nature's Aura for. I was doing Nature's Aura so that we could continue with bees. But I think we'll have to continue bees in the next episode because I'm completely out of time for today's video. I do hope that you guys enjoyed it though. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the video as well as if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe. In the next episode, we're going to go hard in on the bees in order to get basically all of the ones that we can get automated and producing materials for us. So if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me today. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. You guys have a great day.